Welcome back everyone. So we are going to work on the second practice test for Access Level 1 Chapter 2. So this is the employee reviews file that we're going to be working with. Skills ACC02 Greater A2. And that I've downloaded right here. Okay, so there are two files you need. One is the database file as well as the instructions. As usual, I have printed mine out so I am ready to go and I don't have to flip back and forth. So it's ready to uh, populate and get it done. This one here is a few uh, less steps than the last one that we just did for chapter two, but it is very, how can I say, meaty. There's a lot of work to be done to score the 100 points that you are hoping to get on this. So we're going to open it up and get right to it and see what's going on. As usual, we're going to enable content and uh, get this party started. So that's step one. We open the file and we are good to go. As usual, make sure you know where you're saving these things so that when you upload them, you're uploading the correct information and you're getting the mark that you're supposed to be getting. Step two says in the column of the reviews table data sheet. So reviews table. So now we've got two tables. We've got employees and we've got reviews. So we're going to double click the reviews table. And it says that uh, we need to add a number calculated field to this final column here. And we're supposed to be adding attendance and customer relations. And we're going to give it a field name of total score. So there's a whole bunch of steps involved here. Uh, for step two, there is 14 marks. It's not complicated, but it is heavily weighted. So let's take a look at what we got to do. We're going to go over here and we are going to click on the arrow and we're, we need a number one, but it needs to be calculated. So we cannot use the number. We need to go to calculated field, click on number, and we can then build in the expression builder the actual uh, function that we're trying to do. So basically, it says that we need to add attendance and customer relations fields together. We can double click, do a plus, and then customer relations, double click, and that will give us the equation we're looking for. When we click OK, we can field or give the field name uh, one that they've given us, which is total score, just like that. Now we gotta make sure that it looks good and we are ready to go. So that's step two. Next one we're going to do is we are going to uh, step three. It says use a simple query wizard to create a query. All right, so basically we're gonna build one from scratch, but we're using the wizard and it says to use the following fields in the proper order. So it's very, very important. It says include the first name and then the last name field from the employees table. So make sure you're noting that. And then add the review date, attendance and customer relations from the reviews table. So we gotta use multiple tables here to create this query. So before we do that, let me save and close the reviews table. So save and then close. To create a new query, I need to go to create and it tells us to use the wizard. So not the design view, the wizard. So we're gonna do that, perfect. Now it says simple query wizard, excellent. That's our option there, click OK. From the reviews table now, it says to add specific dates. However, we need to go from employees table first. So it's, it's because we had the reviews table selected here, it automatically went there first. So let's fix that, let's go employees table so that we do it in the proper order. If it's not in the proper order, it could cause all kinds of problems. So we're gonna include the first name and then it says, then the last name. Now we switch to the review date in the other table. So we're gonna to go to review and it says review date, attendance, customer relations, like so. Now just make sure that everything else is okay. It says good, it says accept all other wizard defaults and name the query flagged reviews. Next, next. So up here, we're gonna call it flagged reviews. Make sure our spelling is good. And then I can click finish. Excellent. So step three is done. 
So just right off the bat, these, these two questions here are total 26 marks. It's, it's quite substantial. Step four, while still in that same query, it wants us to do some criteria that limits the query to only reviews from the year 2013. So people can get really tied up with this one. This is worth 12 marks, probably the easiest 12 marks you are going to get uh, throughout these practices. So let's take a look. Let's go to design view. So we're in the flagged reviews. We're gonna go home tab, click design view. It is at this point that we can add the criteria to the date. So I see review date is here. I'm gonna to go to criteria. Now, if you don't remember this from the last movie or the last uh, show that I did, we need to do a between calculation. So we're gonna do between one dash, one dash 2013 space and uh, 12 dash 31 dash 2013 or slash I'm gonna press tab oh it's upset with me um, must have done something wrong so let's take a look here try to figure this one out between 1 dash 1 and oh it looks okay unless I missed something else interesting Oh, I see what it is. Look at that. Eh? Something so simple. In between the and and the 12. I missed a space. Perfect. Look at that. So this is what I was referring to in all my other videos. Something so silly like that could drive you crazy. But we got it. So we're good. So that's perfect now. And uh, that's 12 marks. Step 5. It says, in the flagged reviews query, add a calculated column that calculates the average of the two uh, scores. So that's basically the attendance plus the customer relations divided by two. And then set the average as a column's alias. All right, pretty neat. This one's worth 12 marks as well. So basically, we need to add a calculated column over here. And it is going to look like uh, attendance plus customer relations in brackets then divided by. So there's a way we can do this. We can actually type this out manually. However, that might just take too long. So what I'm gonna to look to do is I'm going to go up here to where the builder option is up here. So it looks like a little wand with a little bit of uh, dust there. If I click on that, that should give me an expression builder. Perfect, so this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for attendance plus customer relations. Now, what I need to do though, is I need to put these in brackets because there's more to the story. So I'm gonna go like that and like that because bed mass will tell us that now we can divide it by two and click okay. Now over here, it says expression one because there's no alias that we've given it. So here's our a chance to set this as not expression one, but as average, like it's asking us to do. Average. Make sure all our spelling is good to go. And voila, we are in good shape here. So we're gonna check off number five. That is 12 marks, nice, complete, perfect. So step six now says, also we're in the same query. It says add a criteria to the average calculated column so that only reviews where the average is less than two display. Run the query and verify that five records display. Save and then close the query. Okay, so let's go over here where the average is. And remember, we need to, to know our symbols. We need less than two. Tab out and we should now have our query. So let's run it, take a look. How many records are there? Perfect, there are five records, which means we are on the right track. So let's save the query, and then we're gonna close the query. Perfect, so step six is now done. That was eight marks. Okay, now step seven. It says create a new query in design view. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a circle around design view because that tells me I need to do it by uh, manual. 
or manually, and then it says summarize the scores for each department. Add the department, attendance, customer relations, and total score fields in that order. For each department, have the query provide the average attendance and customer relations scores. Set the captions to AV attendance, AV customer relations, and format both fields as fixed with one decimal displayed. Wow, that is a lot of information. So let's take a look. I'm gonna go to create, and we're gonna go into the design, and let's add both tables. So I'm gonna hold the shift key. I'm gonna click both of these so that they're both selected, and then I'm gonna click add. At this point, I'm going to close this dialog box because it's in the way. I'm also going to just double check that I have everything visible. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and that makes it perfect. So let's go back to the question and see exactly what it says. It says add the department. Okay, so we're going to take a look. Department, double click. Then it says attendance. Double click. Customer relations, double click total score fields perfect excellent so that now shows that i have everything that i'm looking for it says for each department have the query provide the average attendance and customer relations scores set the captions to av attendance and av customer relations and format both fields so i'm rereading it because it's so much information that sometimes it's easy to make mistakes so I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go for each department, I need to add the total row, which we kind of discussed in the last video. So I'm gonna go up here to the totals, open that up, perfect. So I am going to group based on departments, excellent. And then what we need to do is we need to change this from group by to average, and then group by, then average. It doesn't say to do anything yet here, so we're just going to hold off for a second. So let's leave that there. We got two averages. So let's go in here, make sure our property sheet is all set up here, because we need to go in here and put a caption. So the first one is av, and then it says to make it attendance, and we got to watch our spelling. It also says to format it so that it is one decimal place. So it's fixed one decimal place. So go fixed and we go one decimal place. Excellent. Now we're going to go over to customer relations. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go caption. This one's going to be AVE and then customer. Let me move my mouse out of the way. Oh, look at that spelling mistake. Easily done. Customer relations again i moved my mouse in the way okay so customer relations now i gotta format this one fixed and i also have to make it one decimal place excellent so that looks good then it says to save the query all right so we're gonna go here save and because it's a new query we gotta name it and it wants a name of yearly averages and click OK. Now you'll notice it over here. It's looking good. That was step seven. That's a, That was a lot of work for 12 marks compared to the other ones that we had just done. That one's a big one. Step eight, it says in the same query that we're in, so the yearly averages query, set the total score fields total to first and set the column sort in descending order. Change the column settings so that it does not display in the query data sheet. Huh, interesting. All this question is saying, and now this is 12 marks as well. This is where things get a little bit crazy. This one's a lot simpler for 12 marks than the previous one. Either way, we'll take the marks where we can get them. What this exact question is saying, this step eight is saying, change this group by and change it to first. That's all, nothing crazy there. And then it says, set the column to sort in descending order. So basically, we're gonna to go to the sort and we're gonna choose descending. Simple. And then it says change the column setting so that it does not display in the query data sheet. So basically, we wanna be able to sort by this column, 
but we do not want to see it in our results. So that's basically what we're doing here. We're going to take this check mark off. All of this stuff applies, it's just not seen, which is fine. That's step eight. So there we go. That one's done. We are almost at the end. Step nine says run the query and then set the column width to be best fit. Verify that 12 records display and then save and close the query. Cool. This is my favorite part. Run the query to see if it works. Awesome. Here it is. Records 1 to 12. Looks good on that side. Let's see if uh, it's descending order. It's hard to see. It looks good. Yeah. All right. Excellent. So now what we need to do at this point is we need to um, save and close. We got to save and close. Oh, sorry. I missed a step. I knew there was one. We need to best fit. So let's select the table. Field width. Best fit. I almost got a little excited, a little ahead of myself. Either way, step nine is done. That's four marks. Those are the little things that you can miss on a test. So it's extremely important that you don't try and rush through it. I've done this exercise so many times and sometimes I get a little too excited and I miss things. But you guys don't want to do that. All right, we're going to save and close the query. Excellent. Step 10, our actual last working step. This one wants us to open the duplicate values query and make a modification. And now here's where we're going to introduce some wild cards. In class, depending on uh, which class you're in, I explain the wild cards and the ones that we most commonly use, which is a star. However, there is another one, which is a question mark. And the difference between the two without going into too much detail is that the star can pull multiple letters as long as it's in the right position in the, in the criteria that you've assigned. The question mark will only pull only one letter. So sometimes that makes sense, sometimes it does not. This one is a star. This is what we got to do. So let me read it. Open the duplicate values query in design view. Using a wildcard character, add the criteria to display the eight records for Stephen A. Hearn, whose first name is spelt Stephen with a V in four records and Stephen with a PH in four other records. Run the query, then verify that eight records result. Save and close the query. This one's 14 marks and I'm telling you, not complicated if you know what you're doing. So let's uh, open this in design view. And from here now, we got to put in a criteria for his first name. However, it needs to be a like because we're not quite sure how it's going to be spelled. We're looking for Steven, right? But wait, we don't want the V. We want a star. So S-T-E, leave a space because it could either be V, as in Victor, or P-H. Then you do an E-N. So we can have one or two letters that will show up for us. Next, I'm going to move to the last name. A lot of people forget that they also have to have the last name. There could be many different Stevens, and we do not want to uh, pull more than the eight results that we're looking for. So do not forget that it has to be an exact match to Ahern in the last name. But the Steven can be where the wild card is going to take place. So that's like Steven, Ahern. Now at this point, I'm supposed to run the query and cross my fingers that we only get eight results. So let's take a look. Down at the bottom, one of eight. Awesome. Now you see the four Stevens with the V. You see the four Stevens with the PH. And the last names are all the same, just like we would expect it. At this point, we are to save the query and close the query. That is step 10. And that is it for this exercise. This one was not that crazy. The questions, the way they were worded can be a little bit complicated, but the actual work involved, once you know how to do it, or once you've had enough practice doing it, is really simple. So at this point, you can either save it, upload it to uh, my IT lab or to Blackboard, or just keep it on your key for future reference to practice. But I have a really good feeling about the fact that if you guys work hard on these two practice tests, and you know them inside out, when the real test comes in a couple weeks, you will be just fine. Well, that ends this video, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all soon in class. And if you have any questions as usual, feel free to give me a call uh, at the school or email me at the school, and we will take care of any questions you have.